Hey y'all, welcome to Ms. Clark's chemistry class. This lesson is about states of matter. Now I'm going to be releasing a whole series of videos over the states of matter because there's actually quite a bit to learn. So make sure and subscribe so you get all of them. Go grab your notes, grab something to write with, and let's get started. We're only going to be talking about solids, liquids, and gases. Solids have a definite shape and a definite volume. The particles here, they're all really close, tightly packed together, and they really hold their shape. Now this is due to the intermolecular forces. That's going to come up in the next video, so make sure and watch out for that. Also, solids, they cannot be compressed. Liquids, their intermolecular forces are a little bit weaker, so it allows those particles to be able to slide past each other. They can slide past each other, but it does keep them all together. Liquids have no definite shape. Because the intermolecular forces are a little bit weak and those particles can flow past each other, liquids take the shape of their container. But they do have a definite volume. You can pour liquid into a graduated cylinder, see how much there is, so it does have a definite volume. Now, you might think that liquids can be compressed, but they are also not compressible. You cannot compress liquids. For example, you fill your water bottle up a little bit too full, and you think, huh, I can put the lid on it anyway. And as soon as you try to screw that lid down, water squirts out. You cannot compress liquids. Gases, whole different ball game. Gases have no shape, they also have no volume. And that's because the intermolecular forces are so weak that these particles, they're just all over the place. They take the shape of their container. So if you have a gas, it's going to take the whole volume of the container. Or if you have a gas, it's going to take the shape of the container. So it has no shape, no volume. One thing else about gas, since gas is mostly empty space, you can compress it. Gases are compressible. Think about compressed air. You know the container of air that you might would clean off your keyboard or a Lysol container. We can compress gas because of all of that empty space. Let's look at each a little bit more carefully. So if we're talking about solids. I've already said that they have strong intermolecular forces. And again, intermolecular forces. I'm gonna have a video all about intermolecular forces. So if you hear that word and you're like, what? Make sure and check that out. They're also very ordered, meaning their particles are really tight. They're in an orderly fashion. That's what gives solids their shape, being that they're highly ordered. Also, the particles, they're not moving around like crazy. They're kind of locked in place. That's what we call high order. So here we are, particles are locked in place. That's what's going to give solids their shape. Now, most of the time, solids, that state of matter solid, is going to have the highest density. Now, we're going to talk about water. That goes against this rule. That's why I just put usually. Now, there's two types of solids, amorphous solids and crystalline solids. First, I kind of wanted to show you a diagram. Let's notice a couple of things, and then I'm going to give you a more of a definition. If we're looking at the diagram for amorphous solid, the, there's really no set pattern. Like glass, glass is an amorphous solid. Whereas quartz, very, very geometrical. All of these shapes, it's repeated over and over and over. So here's another look at amorphous and crystalline solids. Again, here very ordered, tightly packed. It's going to make a geometric shape. So crystalline, we say that these are very ordered, regular shapes. Since it's so regular, like a geometric jungle gym, it melts at a very specific temperature. You heat them up, you hit this temperature, it's going to start melting. Some good examples of that would be diamond and quartz, very hard materials. So a crystalline structure is going to be a harder, more rigid material than an amorphous solid. If we look at amorphous, you see, again, there's no order, there's no shape, it's just kind of a random jumble. So amorphous, we say it has no order. The molecules don't stack very well. If they stack very well, then they're gonna make crystal shapes. Since the order is pretty random, it has no specific melting point. It's going to start melting and getting soft over a wide range of temperatures. Some good example of that would be rubber, wax, and then there's the glass again. Let's talk about liquids. 
Liquids also have those strong intermolecular forces. That means the particles have to stay close together. But there is more disorder there. Because these particles can move around a little bit more, since their intermolecular forces are a little bit weaker than solids, those particles can move around a little bit. When the particles can move, we start calling that disorder. Since these molecules can slide past each other, this is why liquids flow. Now, when you pour a liquid, you don't have particles flying off out of the clear blue. They stay together and pour into the other container. That's because of those intramolecular forces. So liquids, we do consider their intramolecular forces to be pretty strong, not as strong as solid, and liquids can flow. Gases, very weak intramolecular forces. That means the particles aren't really that sticky to each other. Solid, those particles are sticky to each other, so sticky it makes a rigid shape. Liquids, the particles are sticky to each other, but not so sticky that it makes a rigid shape. Gases, hardly any intermolecular forces. That's why they just fill the container with absolutely no shape. Since these particles are free to move around, we call this very disordered. The particles have a lot of energy. They're bouncing around all over the place. They're moving very disordered. The particles are very spread apart. We've talked about how gases fill the container because the, the particles aren't sticky to each other, so they can just roam around the container as they want. And so gases, they're mostly empty space. The amount of space that's between each particle is so great and so vast when you're comparing it to the particle itself. Particles, atoms, molecules, teeny tiny. There is a lot of empty space. Gases, since they are very disordered and their particles are free to move about, can, they can expand. Since gases are free to move around their particles, there's a lot of space. Well, if we were to put a certain amount of gas in a bigger container, those particles are going to spread up to fill that container. Expandable. And then like we said before, Gases, again, since they're mostly empty space, you can compress those molecules very close together and get a compressed gas. Now, gas particles, since their particles can move around freely, they diffuse very quickly. That's why when you walk into a classroom and someone has sprayed perfume in the back corner, it doesn't take very long for that smell to get all over the classroom because gases can diffuse very quickly. Now, gases normally have a very, very low density. Solids most of the time have the most, liquid the next, gases the very least. That was the basics of solid, liquid, gas. Again, keep watching for these next videos. We're gonna talk about phase changes, intermolecular forces, properties of liquids. Until next time, bye y'all.